Good day everyone! My name is Jello Bandong and I am Rochelle Alramos and we are seniors at Far Eastern University's Institute of Arts and Science. And this is our formative assessment for the course Medical Entomology. Now that the lockdown has nearly ended in certain areas, more people are venturing outside, which means more sunshine and more time to spend outdoors. Playing, hiking, and experiencing nature is the common activity we share with our, our friends and family. Unfortunately, this may also mean spending more time with some of nature's most dangerous parasites. The hard ticks, which are widespread in tall grass and forested places, and one of the most troublesome parasites out there. Now let's discuss the morphology of hard ticks, the presence of tooth, Hypostome immediately identifies them as ticks. Adult hard ticks are flattened or subventrally, oval in shape, and about 2 to 23 millimeters long, size depending on species and whether they are fed or fully engorged with blood. So females are usually bigger than males. Capitulum or false head project forwards from the body and is visible from above. In hard ticks, the pulps are swollen and club shaped. Hard ticks also have a dorsal plate called a dorsal shield or scotum, which is absent in some ticks. In males, the scotum is large and covers almost the entire dorsal surface of the body, whereas in females, it is much smaller and restricted to the interior part of the body. Okay, so in fully fed females, the scotum may be difficult to see because it appears in small in relation to the enlarged body and becomes pushed forwards so that it is almost vertical in position. So four pairs of legs which each leg ending in a pair of claws, coxal organs are absent in hard ticks. Both exudid and ergacid ticks have hemimetabolous life cycles. That is, there is incomplete metamorphosis involving in a larval and nymphal stage. In addition, adult exuded ticks remain attached to their host for long periods as blood feeding often lasts one to four weeks. After feeding, the enormously engorged tick drops from the host to the ground and shelters. So oviposition begins three to six days after the female drops from the host, but egg laying may not begin until several weeks or months after the end of the feeding. 1,000 to 10,000 of small spherical eggs are laid in a gelatinous mass which is formed in front and on the top of the tick's scuto. A few species lay as many as 20,000 eggs and the egg mass may become larger than the ovipositing female. After 10 to 20 days to a few months, six-legged larvae hatch from the eggs. Larvae are around 0 0.5 to 1.5 mm long and are sometimes called seed ticks. So just like newborn babies, newly emerged larvae remain inactive for a few days, after which they climb up vegetation and wait for passing holes. Questing refers to the larvae's and nymphs and adults host seeking behavior. Once on a host, the chelicerae and hypostome are inserted deep into the skin and the larvae began blood feeding. So the newly formed eight-legged names climb up vegetation and behave similarly to the larvae, which is as mentioned questing in seeking a host. Blood feeding lasts five to 10 days after which fully engorged names drop to the ground and shelter under stones or amongst vegetation. The names molt to produce male or female exodic ticks. So newly formed adults remain inactive for about one week after which they climb vegetation and start questing for passing hosts. So moving on to the classification of Arctic. So Arctic is under the class of Arachnida with the order of Anactina trichidia and family of Ixodidae. Arctics have 713 species belonging to 12 gener genera. Medically, the more important genera are Ixodes, Dermacenter, Amblyoma, and more other. Now that you are familiar with the heart tick, it is time to discuss its medical importance. So heart ticks are vectors of typhus such as Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever 
or what also called Riquetia riquetsi, and Mediterranean Spotted Fever, and Q Fever. So many arboviruses including tick-borne encephalitis, OMS hemorrhagic fever, Casanur forest disease, Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, and Colorado tick fever are transmitted by hard ticks. It also transmits to Larenia that causes tick paralysis. Moving on to the control, ticks, despite their small size, may create major problems by spreading serious infections, such as Lyme disease and Rocky Mountain spotted fever. As a result, it is only important to recognize the effective control used to prevent them. So the rapid removal of ticks is the first on the list, which often reduces the chances of disease transmission. Grasp the tick as close as possible to the whole skin with blunt forceps and slowly pull the tick out. Dogs can be treated with sprays, lotions, or dust containing permethrin, resmetrin, carbaryl, proboxur, or chloropyrifos to kill their ticks, which may otherwise attach to humans. Commercially available spot on treatments using pentayon, imidacloprid, amitraz, fipronil are also available to kill dog ticks. So life cycle is hemimetabolus based on our reference. Is this true to all species of this family or there are species that have complete metamorphosis? What would be the significance of knowing this new information? So each species, just like humans, have a unique survival strategy and life cycle. Heart ticks have a hemimetabolus life cycle. So according to Dr. Service 2012, the life cycle of exodidae or heart ticks is hemimetabolus. Son and Chai and Rowe 2013 backed this up by stating that the overall body of young heart ticks matches that of adults. Followed by stating that there are egg, larva, nymph, and adult stages in the development of heart tick, indicating that it is truly hemimetabolus development. So the study of Pasternak et al. Also emphasize that, as previously stated, heart ticks undergo incomplete metamorphosis, which implies their life cycle compromises four life stages. In addition, U et al. 2003 also claimed that ticks have hemimetabolus in nature, meaning they go through incomplete metamorphosis, implying they also require chitinolytic enzymes to remove all cuticle and allow synthesis of new cuticle for continued growth and development. For now, you will realize that even a heart plague, which is considered a parasite, also plays an important role in this planet, just like you. Heart ticks are also striving to live as well as we do. They might be a parasite for most living things, but we will never know since evolution is constant. As time passes by, new research will emerge and this species might be just as significant as previous studies. That is all. Thank you.